Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel where we discuss all things related to networking. In this video, we'll dive into the concept of subnetting, its significance in networking, and how it enables efficient allocation of IP addresses. So, let's get started. If you want to delve deeper into the world of security and explore various IT topics, we invite you to check out our blog. We regularly publish informative articles that cover a wide range of subjects, including cybersecurity best practices, data privacy, network security, and much more. Subnetting is a technique used to divide a large IP network into smaller, more manageable subnetworks. It allows organizations to efficiently allocate IP addresses, improve network performance, and enhance security. With subnetting, we can break down a network into smaller subnets, each with its own network ID and host ID. This division enables us to better organize and control our network resources, making it easier to manage and troubleshoot network issues. To understand subnetting, we need to grasp two fundamental concepts, IP address classes and CIDR notation, as well as subnet masks and subnet sizes. We have already talked about these concepts in this video and our blog, but here's a brief recap. IP addresses were initially classified into five classes, but with the introduction of CIDR notation, we now use a more flexible representation. CIDR allows for efficient allocation of IP addresses and simplified routing. Let's get hands-on with subnetting. To calculate subnets, follow these steps. Step one, determine the IP address and subnet mask of the original network. Step two, convert the subnet mask to binary. Step three, identify the number of subnets needed. Step four, calculate the number of bits needed for the subnet portion. Step five, create the new subnet masks for each subnet. Let's walk through an example to solidify our understanding. We have a class C network with the IP address 192.168.10.0 and a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. We want to create four subnets. The subnet mask slash 24 indicates that the first 24 bits of the IP address are reserved for the network portion, leaving 32 minus 24 equals 8 bits for the host portion. Since we have 24 network bits, the remaining 8 bits represent the host portion. Step two, convert subnet mask to binary. To proceed, we need to convert the subnet mask to binary form to identify the network and host portions more clearly. To clarify this process, we use a table with values from 128 to one. Each column in the table represents a binary digit or bit. Starting from the leftmost column with 128 and ending with the rightmost column with one, these values are powers of two. 128 is 2 power of 764 is 2 power of 632 is 2 power of 5, etc. In binary representation, each column represents a place value. The leftmost column represents the highest value, and the rightmost column represents the lowest value. A value is added to the total when a bit is 1 maissant in a specific column. If it's 0, that value is not added. So for example, if you see one in the 128 column and one in the eight column, that would be 128 plus eight, which is 136 in decimal notation. We use this table to convert subnet masks and IP addresses into binary to clearly see how many bits are dedicated to the network portion and how many bits are reserved for hosts. Now that we understand the purpose of this table, let's proceed with converting the subnet mask to binary. For instance, in our subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0, let's begin with the first part, which is 255. To convert 255 to binary, we start with the largest value for the leftmost bit, 128, and keep subtracting it from the original number until we reach zero or can't subtract further. 255 can be represented as 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. In binary, this is 11111111, where each a1 corresponds to one of the values we added together. Similar to the first octet, the other 255 are also represented as 11111111 in binary. The fourth octet is all zeros because it doesn't reserve any bits for the network portion. It's entirely available for host addresses. When you combine these four octets together, you get, which is the binary representation of the subnet mask, 
255-255-255-0. Step 3. Determine the number of subnets. We need to determine the number of subnets required to meet our network's demands. In this case, we want four subnets. Step 4. Calculate the subnet bits. We want to create four subnets. To determine the number of bits required for subnetting, we need to find the smallest power of two that is equal to or greater than the number of subnets we want. We need to create four subnets, so we calculate the smallest power of two greater than or equal to four, which is two. Two, the power of two equals sign four. To represent four subnets, we need two bits. Now we have two bits for subnetting, which means we can create four subnets within our original network. These two bits taken from the host portion of the IP address are used to create subnets, and the remaining bits are used for host addresses within each subnet. By allocating two bits for subnetting, we've effectively divided our original network into four smaller subnets. Each subnet can now have its own set of host addresses. Step 5. Create new subnet masks. By adding two bits to the original subnet mask, we get the new subnet mask for each of the four subnets. 255, 255, 255, 192, represented as slash 26. This means we have 26 bits reserved for the network portion, leaving 6 bits for the host portion. Each subnet now has 64 IP addresses, providing enough space for hosts and efficient network management. Congrats! You've learned the fundamentals of subnetting and how to calculate subnets step by step. By mastering this essential skill, you'll be able to optimize your network's performance, enhance security, and efficiently utilize IP addresses. Remember to practice these techniques, and soon subnetting will become second nature to you. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more educational content on networking and security. Thank you for joining us, and until next time, happy subnetting!